Wow, what a month. It's been nuts. And about a month ago, I started working on this Commodore 128D for what I thought I'd call a quick fix. Yeah, right. That didn't happen. So I started out about a month ago working on this Commodore 128D with an intact warranty seal. And I wanted to keep it that way. My plan was to clean it up, clean the heads, test it, clean the keyboard, and have a usable machine. And that seemed to be what was happening, but along the lines, I found there were some subtle issues that were causing me trouble. So to start out with, I was just doing the cleaning. So let's take a look at where I was at and what I was thinking. In a recent live stream, I tested this Commodore 128D right here and found that at least in 64 mode and 128 in 40 column mode, it works. It actually works. So what I thought I'd try to do today is a quick fix. Take a look, make sure everything is actually working properly, see if there's any issues. Uh, if you're wondering why I'm not doing a full restoration on this machine, uh, it's pretty simple. I do not, very much do not, want to break the seal on this warranty tag. So to me, that's really sweet. That's like having a, uh, an ancient, as they say, piece of furniture that still has the original finish. So I know not everybody thinks that's important, but it is kind of important to me. So what I'm gonna do today is see how it works. I will clean up the keyboard, but even the keyboard's in great shape, as you can see. To facilitate this testing, what I've done is I just gave this monitor a quick checkup. And by quick checkup, I mean quick. It's a 1080 Mega branded one. I just plugged it in, powered it up. It powered up fine. I hooked it up to a computer to make sure that it got output. So if there's uh, any excitement here, uh, don't be surprised. That just may be one of the things we have to deal with. Pops and snaps and goodies. Hey, look at that, 80 columns. Of course, nothing there. Keyboard seems to be working. Blank, 664 blocks free. That disc has been sitting in this computer for God knows how long, probably 20 years again, maybe more. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is go ahead and uh, give it a reset. Let's see here. There we go. So there's Commodore 64 mode. And there's 128 in 40 column mode. Let's see here. There it goes, 40 column. All right, so I'm gonna try now powering it down and see what happens if we hook up the dead test, or not the dead test, the dyad cartridge. So cassette bad, control port, serial port, and user port bad. SID sounds good, and the timer's good. I think we are in good shape. I think the only errors we have are because of missing uh, dongles. So along the way, I started noticing some odd noise coming from the floppy drive, like this. As you see, these disks aren't happy and neither is that drive I may be pulling it apart. Yeah, that doesn't sound great, but actually in retrospect, I don't think the noises were my problem. So the next thing I tried was making some copies, some backups of a disc so that I could play the games. I ran into a few issues here. All right, so one of the things I found, this was not with this machine, but I did find in the collection a number, like four of these 128 system disc sets. I have no idea if the discs are any good. There is CPM disk. On the back side is a CPM user utilities disk. Commodore 128 tutorials disk. 
One of them had something else on the back side, and I can't remember what it was, but not this one. 1541 test demo disc. I don't know if that's right to go with this. It doesn't seem right to me. Let's take a look at another one of these sets. That's better. <laughs> And the Commodore 1571 test and demo disc. Makes a lot more sense to have a 1571 disc. So it comes with a DOS shell for the 128. All right, so let's try that. Like I said, these discs are very questionable. I have an extremely high failure rate on the five and a quarter inch discs from out there. There we go. Huh, nice. All right, let's try a 128 game. So on one of the streams, I uh, found three copies of Wasteland, but the discs all look really bad. So let's see if any of them are of any use. So I'm gonna copy these, back up these discs, assuming they are not protected. Brand new box of Carl's discs. Kind of neat that the uh, 128 actually came with a copy program. All right. So one of my big issues out there is mold. So having these discs sealed in a box, sealed in a bag should uh, alleviate that issue. The disc is like absolutely not usable. So after I unwrapped that box of floppies, I tried to format a disc and immediately I started getting this horrible squealing noise. I wasn't sure at the time what it is. Boy, I know now. At this point, I decided to stop messing around. I started out by using the head cleaner on the drive several times just to make sure it was as clean as I could get without taking it apart. Once that was done, I got out this box of new old stock 3M floppies that I've had for quite a while. I use them on the Commodore 64s all the time and I've never had a problem with them. And when I tried to format a disc using one of these discs, it still gave me an error. So clearly there was a problem with the drive, either so dirty that the drive head cleaner wouldn't clean it or something damaged. So at this point, my options had run out and I had no choice but to open up the case and cut that warranty seal. So this is what happened next. Let's take a look and see what's in here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull the screws loose and pull the cover back a little bit. Oh, that is tight. Maybe I do need the big old one. And then I should be able to just pull this back a little bit to get a gap there. And then just slide this gently. I hate doing this. I just want to get it here without cutting the... There we go. Oh, the pain. The pain. <sighs> All right, it's the first time this thing's been seen by the light of the day since it was made in the 80s. There is no birth date on the inside of the cover. All right, so there's the power supply, floppy mechanism, which is where my trouble is. Caps are all looking okay. It doesn't look like there's any damage to the read write heads. I thought maybe one of these would be hanging in here the way it's been acting. And those both look just fine. And the home position sensor is clear. Yeah, it's all moving smoothly, so. Well, let me dig in here and we'll pull it apart and give it a test and see what we find. The reed heads are right here. And got a couple of fine pointed probes attached to my leads. Okay, so when you test them, you should have, yeah. About 11 to 15 ohms uh, between pin 4 and pin 6, pin 4 and pin 10, pin 4 and pin 1. And we've got an open loop there, so that's not correct. If I go down to the other head and I look between pins 1 and 
what's that, five. 9.7 is actually a little low, but not terrible. 10.9. And here, where we had an open loop on the uh, bottom head, we have 10 ohms. So this drive, the bottom head, head zero, is bad. It's open. So what I am going to do to fix this is I have a 1571 here and I've already pulled the screws out because you've seen screws taken out enough I think. I think it's pretty clear the way the stone collection was stored and how a lot of things have been scavenged that I'm going to end up with a boatload of parts machines. But my intention is, is once I get as many machines as I can working, uh, try to get the parts machines as many as possible also up and running. I don't want to be just parting everything out. They're certainly moving freely. All right, so let's put this in the machine. A lot of rust, a lot, a lot of rust on the, uh, it's like an RF modulator shield. Let's get that off of the little alcohol. Just set in right here. And let's screw it in. All right, so we're connected here, we're connected here. Power supply is connected. I shall see what I shall see. I'm going to start out with just a blind test and see if I get errors as I did before. So after testing the drive and replacing the drive because it had a bad write head, meaning it worked perfectly, unless I wanted to write on side zero of the disc. Who knew? Uh, this is where I started having a lot of problems with the drive, a lot of squealing. And to cut to the chase, basically what was happening was the new old stock discs I had had the oxide layer breaking down. So they literally rubbed off onto the drive heads, contaminating the head in the process of reading just like one track. It could not do a whole disc. That made it impossible to read or write to the discs because the disc drive heads became contaminated immediately. And what I've since found is that you need to properly clean the discs and any disc that starts to squeak or squeal at all immediately stop take it out, set it aside, try cleaning it. Occasionally that'll make it work, but more often than not, it doesn't. So I 3D printed this five and a quarter inch floppy cleaning frame. And basically it allows you to put a floppy in, close this down and rotate it. There's a rubber band in there that gives it some traction. So literally you can take a disc, put it in there and then spin it like this. Then, using a lint-free cloth, this is an eyeglass cleaning cloth that's nice and gentle, and a little bit of alcohol. Then I can simply take this and clean the disc. So next I'm going to clean it up, and we'll try a little bit of software on it. I've got a package around here somewhere that's for the 128, and uh, then we'll try some, uh, some games, because, you know, games. I like using detailing brushes for some of this stuff, and I keep two of them. <laughs> Juggle two of them. This is the nasty one. It gets used with liquid. It gets used for cleaning gross things. This is the clean one, nice one that I use as a brush. And these are real inexpensive. I can link it in the description if you want. So just to get down in the cracks between the keys and I have a space off that way that I want to figure out a big work desk area that I can set up multiple machines on so looking forward to that and this machine will live there this is going to be my uh, my 128 that's out and in use um, I will probably keep one 128 flat like I had back in the day also, and I'll keep that one in a, in a box. All right, so this does need a little bit of the old magic eraser action. 
Uh, one thing this thing does need is new feet. So when we get to the bottom, we'll take care of that. When we get to the bottom of this. And this looks to me like just standard Commodore 64 feet are gonna do the job. Redonkulous. They are just squished as flat as a pancake. I'm gonna use a plastic spudger to try to remove these. See how that does. Very brittle. If these just got hot and melted at some point, actually still pliable except around the edges. Those are the feet I have. They are for the Commodore 64. And uh, they look like they should fit. It's about right. After I got the floppy situation sorted out, I was able to make some progress. And it's been a lot of fun. I found in the stone collection this Moon Patrol cartridge. And you know me and Moon Patrol. Uh, so I've done a bunch of Moon Patrol playing. I was also able to get a set of Wasteland play discs made. That's a system that's built right into the game to copy all four discs. It takes forever. Um, I did a little bit of game footage, but then I discovered later on that I had an OBS setting set up wrong. And so I did not get any audio. So I'm not going to have a bunch of Wasteland gameplay here, but you know, suffice it to say it worked and I moved on to looking at my Ultima 4 copy. I have had this copy of Ultima 4 for quite a while. This was my favorite game back in the day. I just absolutely loved it. Played it all the way through in 1986. It came out in late 85, but I was in basic training, so didn't have access to it until I got to Germany in the army. Um, I remember having this whole box and everything. It's, it's really neat with the, uh, the map and the onk and everything. So I was able to make backup copies of all four discs. I've got them right here. I have loaded up and played. I have started my first game of Ultima 4 in 35 years. And the last time I started a game of this was 1986. So I plan over time to play it through. I'll put a link in the description. There's a video on my second channel and don't go looking for my second channel. It's just a place for me to put junk that doesn't belong on this channel. It's not a proper second channel. I call it Raven Wolf Bits and Bobs. And it's got all kinds of just garbage on there. Things like our local 4th of July parade. Um, but I stuck on there a loop of the Ultima 4 intro playing some of the music. And then I stuck on there the first 25 minutes of gameplay. So starting the game up, going through the initial intro, the questions, creating your character, and a little bit of running around on the surface world. And that was so fun. I just can't wait to get back to it. But I promised myself, no Ultima 4 until this video's out. So if you're seeing this video, I might be playing Ultima 4 now. Uh, now I'm finally getting the point. The floppies, floppies have been driving me crazy. It's like so many of them are bad. I mean, you wanna cry? I'm crying. And reason I'm showing you this is this is all stuff I've done in the process of really testing this. It was flaky, I was having all kinds of problems. This puppy's been working like a champ for me for the last like week. Uh, but sadly, after cleaning, Gold Box Champions of Crint. I haven't tested all the discs, but they're, they're looking ugly. Uh, even after cleaning, as soon as you put a disc in the drive, it starts contaminating the disc head. So the binder, I believe, on the oxide is starting to break down and come off the discs. Fortunately, you know, the discs are the one thing in here that's easily replaceable. I still have the originals for the appearance, and I can go ahead and download the discs and use ones from offline. So there's that. But there is Champions of Crin, bad. Curse of the Azure Bond, bad. This is Pool of Radiance. This is where I've got three complete sets of all the discs and they're all bad. Two copies of Elite, one from the Stone Collection. One actually is from the collection where I got the Ultima 4. And the Ultima 4 works great, but the Elite is bad. And I'm planning on putting out a video here in the future talking about what I've learned about floppy recovery because I've learned a lot. And this is a recurring theme on my channel. 
I worked on these machines a lot back in the day. I was a certified Commodore hardware developer. I worked on the machines, I repaired the machines, and I used the machines every day. But this recurring theme on my channel as I'm learning is that 30 years ago, the machines weren't 30 years old. And there's a lot I'm learning that I was not aware of. And the, the state of floppies is a big part of it. Um, I have a whole box of new old stock floppies. And I'm coming to the conclusion that probably 80% of those are no good. Now, sadly, with the stone collection stuff, all of these RPGs were organized into one spot on the shelves, and that's in a spot near where there was a leak. So they were subjected to more humidity than a lot of the other stuff in there, and they have mold residue on the discs. But even after cleaning that off, I'm not able to recover a lot of them. Ah, <sighs> so... After that adventure, this machine is finally working, and it's working great. I'll have a channel update here within probably the next week or so, give you an idea of what I'm working on. I've got a bunch of machines I'm really excited about, and this is done. The 4,000 power supply parts are here, so I want to get it done. So one little teaser is this machine. This machine turned out to be a really cool old VIC-20. And I have not plugged it in yet. I haven't tried it. But in a future video, we'll take a look at it. Thanks for watching, and I hope you liked this video. In the near future, I'll have that channel update with a whole bunch of information on videos that I already have in the works. And in the meantime, I think it's time for me to say journey onward.